Hi everyone. So today we're going to talk about the topic of electric potential energy. Now, just to refresh our memories on a couple things about energy in general, um, if we're talking about a system, I'm really particular and we want to be careful about how we define our system, but a system is just some small segment of the universe that is uh, relevant and specified for solving a specific problem. The environment is everything outside of this. So typically what we're doing is we're choosing a system of objects to include in our system. Um, so then we can analyze what's going on with forces, whether those forces are only involved with the objects interacting in our system, um, meaning those are the internal forces, or if we have forces that are interacting with objects outside our system, and those would be external forces. Right? Now, when we have um, energy conserved in a system, um, we basically have um, energy can be conserved in a system. Okay, long story short, the total amount of energy in the universe is conserved, right? So we have to kind of be careful about whether we have energy entering or leaving our system, and it does that through um, external forces. So if we have an isolated system, Right? This means that all the forces involved with our objects are all internal. There are no external forces, and therefore there are no external forces doing work on our system. I guess I should put a caveat there. There can be external forces, but as long as they're not doing any work, then the system is isolated. The total amount of energy in the system does not change. If we have a system that's not isolated, this means that energy is transferred into an outer system via work. Right? This can be, or heat. I was talking about heat this year. Just to remind ourselves, the formula we have, so the change in energy of our system is equal to work, right? So this is a work energy theorem, um, where work is can be defined as the, the parallel, the component, uh, component of the external force that's parallel to the displacement, uh, which kind of amounts to the formula Fd cosine theta. Okay, so quick review there, quick refresher. Refreshing our memories further with applying energy conservation here. Um, so let's suppose we have a hand pushing on a spring on a block that compresses at a constant speed. All right. Um, if we consider the system to be the block and the spring together, we're including the spring in our system, then the only external force we have here that's doing work is the pushing force of the hand. Right, looking here, force of gravity is perpendicular to the displacement of the object, so it doesn't do any work. Um, so this pushing force is going to, it does work on the system. Um, so therefore, it's going to add energy to our system. The way this is manifested in our system is by an increase in uh, spring potential energy because our spring is compressing. Right, so remember the spring force uh, that, excuse me, this, um, spring potential energy increases as the spring is compressed or stretched from its equilibrium position. So as it gets pushed in, that work is manifested into um, spring potential energy. All right. So if we were to you know, remove the hand after this situation, the block's going to shoot off as the spring potential energy converts into kinetic energy. Now let's apply a similar kind of argument here to charges. All right, so we're going to define our system to be both the test charge and the source charges, right? So this way, um, our um, electric force here is internal to our system. Similarly, in the spring example, the spring force was internal because both the block and the spring were in our system. So here, our electric potential energy, excuse me, our electric force is internal to our system. So that's going to manifest instead um, as rather than dealing with the work done by the electric force, we're going to be dealing with electric potential energy instead. But let me take a step back here. Um, let's have a system of source charges here. So remember, that means that these, uh, these charges here are creating an electric field around them, right? Where the test charge, we're assuming its charge is so small that its electric field doesn't, um, it doesn't really create one. It's negligible compared to the source charges, all right? So this test charge is feeling a force due to the source charges, right? So naturally, 
all right, this charge does not want to move towards these test charges because they're both positive. So we need some sort of external force here to, to bring this charge closer. Um, and in doing so, that's going to increase the energy of the system, just like it did with the spring. Um, bringing this uh, charge closer is going to add energy. And we can kind of picture that because if we were to, let's say, look at this top picture and we were to let go of the charge at this moment, right, this, this uh, charge would, you know, accelerate leftward, right? But if we brought it closer, it would then accelerate leftward at um, a faster speed because we have more potential energy in this situation. Um, so basically, kind of the caveat here is um, this work to bring this uh, test charge towards the source charges manifests, manifests itself as potential energy, specifically electric potential energy. So again, I'll repeat what's important here is we're including both the test charge and the source charge in our system. That is allowing, that makes our, this electric force an internal force to our system. Therefore, in terms of energy, rather than having work done by an external force, that electric force, we have um, electric potential energy instead. I'm trying to put the language into similar language that we discussed last year. So kind of a note here on some semantics. First is that we can literally compute how much electric potential energy is in a system by kind of computing the equivalent situation of uh, the work needed to bring that system of charges together, right? Because they're two sides of the same coin. Um, now, electric force is a conservative force. Um, so this means that we have an electric potential energy equation. Um, also, something just to be careful with, again, with vernacular and language, we're sloppy in the way a lot of physics is spoken. We shouldn't be. A lot of times we'll say, oh, the potential energy of charge Q, right? But if we're just dealing with the test charge and it's not interacting with other charges, right? We need to include both the test charge and the source charge in order to be speaking about potential energy because potential energy is energy of a system, not of one object. It has to, there has to be an interaction, an internal force here. Um, now, if we did not include these source charges in our system, that's okay. But then rather than having and dealing with electric potential energy, we now have the external force, the electric force. And then, so then this external electric force does work on our system instead, our system being just an object. So let's assume that we have two positive charges that are initially at rest. Right, so one charge, the source charge, is let's say that at the origin, and let's say this test charge starts at infinity, right? So it's infinitely far away. So that just basically means that to begin with, these charges are so far away that they don't have a mutual influence on each other. So they're not yet experiencing um, a mutual electric force on each other. Now, as these charges move towards each other, so I think it's easiest for us to pretend the source charge remains at zero and we bring the chest charge from infinity to some other location. As it moves towards it, it feels a repulsive electric force, right? We can compute this value from Coulomb's law. Um, and this is going to increase as it gets closer, right? We have an um, inverse square law going on here. Now, because of this inverse square law, this force is non-constant, right? So in order to compute the work done, we would need to do some calculus, which this is an algebra-based course, so we're not going to do so. Um, but we can do kind of a wave of the hand calculation because we know the work done by constant force follows the formula that work is equal to, you know, FD cosine theta. And we can plug in here Coulomb's law for the electric force, the Coulomb's formula, um, and we can apply this work energy theorem. So we have Coulomb's law, which is KQQ over R squared. And then this 
uh, distance here is basically the distance between the charges. So we have KQQ over R squared multiplied by R, which just gives us KQQ over R. So this is the formula for electric potential energy. Um, so remember U is used for, to symbolize um, potential energy. And remember we're here K is the Coulomb constant, which you can um, symbolize also as one over four pi epsilon naught. Um, but anyway, so Q here is the source charge, the other Q is the test charge. Um, they may not always be obvious in the problem, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so it's just the two different charges, Q1, Q2, and then R is the distance in between them. Um, and so you might be saying, well, we just moved a particle from infinity to some location, right? And you made the argument that the distance there is R. So the reason for that is we define that the electric potential energy is zero when the when the when charges are infinitely far away. And that's because the electric force, they have no influence on each other, is zero. So these, so when you bring, we only have basically we're also defining then infinite potential energy when uh, the distance between the charges is zero when they're right on top of each other. Um, which is impossible. Uh, and we can see that here in this formula, right? If we divide by a zero, this blows up. Um, so blows up in mathematical terms. Um, so that's the reason why in the displacement, I said the value was, was R. Um, now, kind of how this is presented on your formula sheet, um, it's going to make more sense when we cover electric potential in next lesson. So they don't have this formula here, um, but they do have a formula that relates electric potential energy to what's called electric potential. I know lots of confusing terms this unit, um, where electric potential is equal to this formula here. So basically, if you you know look at this V and plug it into this top equation, we end up with this equation here. Uh, but just realize that electric potential energy has the formula where we have the two charges in our numerator with k, so very similar to the other formulas. It's just that it's divided by r. This is not an inverse square law, it's just an inverse law. All right. Um, and also, don't forget, we do deal with negative signs in our charges. All right. So to, um, just make sure you include them. Um, yes, because electric potential energy uh, can be negative. So what is electric potential energy, right? So aside from everything we just talked about, but you can just basically think about how much energy is going to be stored by work being done on the system and is now and available in a different form, um, such as you can, it can be converted into kinetic energy, just like gravitational potential energy, right? So basically this means that if we have two pos positive charges placed near each other, or let's say two negative or a positive and negative charge, um, we can consider them a system and therefore they have electric potential energy. So once they um, are released, then that would mean these charges would accelerate. So if they're both positive charges, they would accelerate away from each other. So they started off stationary, so no kinetic energy, and then that electric potential energy is converted into kinetic energy once the charges are released. Um, so, and then this movement can now perform work on another system. So to kind of summarize things here in terms of um, signage, if but the charges have the same sign, um, the formula we use basically is this here, the charges will repel, and it takes positive work to keep the charges from moving um, because the charges want to displace away from each other. So you have to push a force kind of inward, so to speak, to keep that from happening. Uh, potential energy therefore decreases if the chargers move, move apart since we define zero to be at infinity for uh, electric potential energy. Um, what if we have a one positive and one negative charge, these will, uh, charges will attract and it takes negative work to keep the charges from moving and potential energy decreases as they move closer together, right? Because the charges want to um, be together. Um, this is kind of a, a summary of how electric potential energy behaves when we have positive and negative charges.